In this video, I want to walk you through some of the time management skills that I've learned through going through college as well as med school. Two very busy times that you have a lot of things that you need to get done and oftentimes you may not think that you have enough time to do them. I think one of the most important things to do, and this is just kind of the overarching idea of the, this entire video, is that working longer hours doesn't actually equate to doing better in school or in work. It's really, you have to work more effectively rather than just working longer hours or harder. So when you're studying, really just focus on studying. And when you're out playing and doing other things, you focus on those solely and you kind of partition what it is that you're doing. I think the first tip that I'll give that I didn't really realize until I really thought about it when I was making this video was that small tasks add up tremendously. So what I've noticed that I do oftentimes is that small little 10 to 15 minute intervals, I'm always doing something. I'm never just waiting around. This could be waiting for the bus or waiting for a friend or, or really waiting for anything really, even waiting outside of a class. I remember in college, I would always, even the downtimes was for 10 minutes between classes, I would always be doing something. And that could be things like emails, flashcards, reviewing slides, really just doing anything that's going to add up. Because these 10 to 15 minute intervals, you, you can imagine throughout the day, you're going to have a lot of these. These can be anywhere between one hour to two hours every single day and multiply that into a week and into a month. You can get a lot more done just by these small little intervals. The next thing is, like I was mentioning before, really when you're studying, you want to be as engaged and you want to be as present as possible. So phone away. Really, when I was studying in college, this was more so in college when not as many things required the computer, but I, I tried to study without the computer as much as possible. So I would really just focus on studying through textbooks and making handwritten flashcards, things like that. I would try to put as many distractions away. Obviously, that's going to be a little bit more difficult nowadays when a lot of things are going to be on the internet, but you really have to try to use the computer as well as your phone only when absolutely necessary. And if you're using the computer and you find yourself that you're using certain websites, and this doesn't have to be specifically social media, it could be really whatever website that you want to block. There's website blockers out there like in Chrome, Work Mode, Stay Focus, Firefox, Leech Block, and BlockSite are ones um, that I've heard of people using. I actually never have really used one because I feel like I have pretty good self-control um, in regards to using certain types of websites. And I didn't really, I tried as best as possible not to use my computer. But if you find that you need to block certain websites, I think these are great resources. I, I know a lot of my classmates have used them in the past as well. Tip number three is, I think, trying to optimize your downtime as best as possible. And I, this one's going to sound kind of weird and out there, but it actually was very useful for me. So I think the best example that I can give is that when I was in college, I lived a decent away from the actual college that I went to, about a 20-minute drive. And so what I would do is I would always have some type of lecture cast going. I wasn't much of listening to lectures over again, but I made a point to it that I would only listen to lectures over again while I was was driving or while I was walking in the hall or something like that, I would be listening to lecture casts. And then when I was studying for the MCAT, I had to commute about once a week, about two hours every every single week. And so th at that time, there was this program, this podcast offered by exam crackers that really walked you through the MCAT and give you some tips, things like that. And I listened to that every single drive. So two hours one way and then two hours back every single week. So I listened to four hours every week. And then once I got to med school, when I started studying for step one, I started listening to the Gold Jam podcast. And this was when I was waiting for the bus, when I was working out, when I was shopping, really when I was just by myself and not really doing anything. Other than that, I would probably be on my phone, surfing the internet, talking to people on YouTube, things like that. So any time that I felt like I would be wasting time, I used that to do something that really didn't require that much effort, but was more of passive learning. So things like in college lecture casts or any type of podcasts, in med school, actual podcasts or lecture casts as well that are more focused to step one is how I utilize my downtime. But really any time that you're by yourself can definitely be made uh, more useful. For more educational resources like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com. Tip number four that I could think of was really trying to cluster repetitive tasks. And the way that I thought about this was what I used to do is I used to always check my emails 
essentially whenever I would get them. I would check my email all throughout the day and they would just take a lot of extra time. And this was either personal email, this was work email or business email or school emails. I had a lot of different emails that I would have to go through and I would kind of check them all throughout the day. And when I actually counted it up, it, it took many hours every single day because you had to open your email, you had to think of a reply, you had to kind of go through all of them each and every step. But what I ended up doing now, which I think actually saves a lot more time, is I cluster them. Instead of checking my emails or checking my phone every single five minutes or 30 minutes, whatever it may be, for my emails, I only check them twice a day. So chances are in, in college or when you're in med school, that would be okay. You can, you can check your, your emails twice a day. Nothing's that urgent that you have to reply right away. When you're at work, that's a little bit different story. So you can't really do that in that situation. But when you're in school, I think it's perfectly okay to just kind of cluster your activities. Checking emails, same thing with checking your phone. This was one that I obviously did much more frequently. And I think everybody does it much more frequently is that, Every single 30 seconds, you're constantly checking your phone, constantly checking your phone, that when you're studying for something and your attention is going away every 30 seconds because you're trying to see who texted you or what your text says, that, that's going to really detract from what you're doing. I found that when I was reading a paper or reading anything, I would be reading one sentence, continue down the page, and I would check my phone, and then you would forget what you even were reading about, you would start back over, and that one page would take you three times as long just because you were, you were checking your phone so frequently. So what I ended up doing was kind of made it almost like mini breaks and, and little rewards. Every 30 minutes, I would check my phone, and that would be the time that I would do things like texting or emails, and, and that worked out very well. The next thing is going to be things like chores or errands. Uh, same thing with that. A lot of times when you have to go to the store and do these different things, um, especially when you're studying for a big test like the MCAT or Step 1, you want to try to cluster as, as much of your life into blocks. And it sounds weird, but it, it helps a lot and it saves a lot of time. And tip number five, I think, is really making a routine. And everybody always says you got to wake up early. you got to wake up at 3 a.m., do whatever it is that you need to do before everybody gets up and you'll feel so much better about yourself. Well, I, I don't think that's necessarily true. That, that's what I like to do because I found that I'm much more effective and much more productive in the morning. So I wake up early in the morning. I, that's when I do my emails, go to the gym, go to the library. And this was my schedule pretty much leading up to step one as well as um, leading up to the MCAT, I would say. Go to the library, go to class, go back to the library, dinner, emails, and then always kind of doing some other activity, right? If you're going along the path of anything in healthcare, you're always doing something else. You either have volunteering, you have research, you have any type of projects that you're working on, as well as just daily life. And then study a little bit and then sleep and, and making it very routine. But I think that you can equally do something very different. If you're not an, um, a morning person, you shouldn't feel... Uh, like you have to have a need to wake up at 5 a.m. just because everybody else is. I think that if you're in school and you're just studying, there's no really need for you to either be up really early in the morning or really late up at night. You can do whatever works for you. So me, it worked really well to, to wake up early in the morning, but you may be... Uh, working very productively at nighttime when after 12 o'clock. So find what works best for you and kind of stick with that. And I think the final thing is really, this was more so when I didn't have as much on my plate, um, but I, I found it to be very true as, as time progressed and I became much more busy is that when you force yourself to be busy and you have all these other activities, for me, I always had other projects that I was working on. So in medical school during my third year, this is when I started Medical Basics uh, with a, a partner of mine. And I had research, I had volunteering, I had a lot of other activities that I had to take care of in addition to school. This was your third year of medical school, a pretty busy time. So it was, I was forced to be productive. No matter what, I had to be extremely productive or else I would fall behind on my studies, I would fall behind on my schoolwork or even in research, things like that. But earlier on, like in high school, I would force myself to be busy. I would I would sign up for these um, after school things, these extracurricular activities. I would be in these sports, one, because I liked them, but also because I, I felt like the more busy that I was, the more productive I became. If you notice that when you're studying for exams, if you're in college, or even in med school, when it comes down to midterms time, you're extremely productive. But when you are two weeks before, or three weeks before, you're really not doing anything. And nothing has changed, just you're a lot more stressed. So for me in college, I always had a job so that when I was three weeks before my exam, I was always pretty focused and I had to be 
forcefully productive. And then when it came time to actually the exam week, then I would kind of push back or get rid of some of my responsibilities from work and really just focus on studying. So you're kind of proactive by necessity. You have these school, work, or research or volunteering uh, responsibilities. And I think that worked really well for me. Um, so hopefully some of these tips you can kind of take away that will be uh, useful for you and kind of figure out what works for you. I think that's what the point of it is that certain things will work well for you and certain things will work well for other people and you don't have to try to change your entire lifestyle and your habits based off of what uh, works for one particular person. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our medical ID card scrub notes. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.